the Python yes. the background. Works now. Yes. So <laughs> Good. <laughs> awesome. So um, yeah, I, I feel pressured now because like I after uh, Naomi's amazing talk. Uh, so <laughs> I hope this is um all right. So um, how to be Pythonic? Because uh, this is section that um. I've asked myself, and I'll tell you what happened, and my journey, and my story. So, um, oops, oh, the animation, ooh. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm Trek. Um, so I have been involved in a lot of open source projects, uh, including Terminus TV, uh, which is uh, an open source database, uh, open source graph database. And um, I also involved in a lot of um, organizing um, different um, things, uh, including London Python Sprints, which we had this uh, Monday, uh, virtual online one. Uh, indie webcam, also <laughs> we have to do it online. That is like several weeks ago. Uh, uh, Europe Python, we also go online. <laughs> and the most special thing is pajamas, um, which is a, a 100% online conference because um, we had this idea even before this crazy um, pandemic happened that we want to be in our bed in our pajamas and have uh, 24 hours a Python um, conference marathon that happened uh, globally. Uh, so we just had a first meeting for the organizing team and I hope to make this happen and to echo with um, Naomi's talk and then maybe, uh, I, I can't be sure at this moment, but if we can do something to help uh, PSF to raise money, that would be great. Uh, but we'll see what happened. Um, so also, uh, recently I am um, streaming online uh, for tutorials. Some of them are in Python, some of them are not, but if you're curious, you can go to Twitch and find me there and follow me so you will catch me when I go online. Um, so um, what does Pythonic mean? Um, is it a thing? I would like to ask this question. And uh, if you can go on the link there, uh, the direct polling there, that uh, you can, uh, I will start the poll in a second. And then um, if you could, um, yeah, if you can do it, that it would be great. So uh, let me see. Yes. Uh, yeah, you should be able to uh, poll now. So if you can't, just like, give me a shout, then um, I, would, I would sort this out. But yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, go there and click on it. I'm seeing, um, yeah, oh, it's paused. Sorry, uh, I'll start again. It's OK. Yeah, OK. Now it should be working, so um, yeah. Yes, just answer the question yes or no, and I will give you um, maybe a few seconds. I think it's a very easy question. Um, yeah, so let's see, let's see. Right, uh, see if I can see the result and if I can, um, right. Okay, I. I think it will be very uh, difficult for me to uh, switch the screen right now. What I got to do is I got to um, tell you the result that I'm seeing. You have to trust me on this. Uh, yeah. Oh, some of you are still voting. OK, so um, I wish I could, uh, you know, uh, let you see it. But uh, I don't know whether if I do it, it will uh, be crazy. So uh, let me try. This, this uh, Zoom thing is making me a bit nervous. Yeah, uh, can can you see the result? Uh, uh, yeah, if not, then I gotta read it out to you, and uh, you gotta see it in the recording because I'm recording the talk and it's showing in the recording, so you know that I'm not lying. <laughs> so now, right now, there's there are like th thirty three of you voted, and then uh, eighty seven point nine percent say yes is a thing. So yeah, I I want to know what people think about it. So. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of people agree that there is uh, a thing. So, um, yeah, I uh, found actually found this on um, <laughs> Stack Overflow. <laughs> uh, I, I always check things on there, and I, I, this amazing community there. Uh, it says um, Pythonic means code that doesn't just get the syntax right. So follow the convention of Python community is a community driven thing and use the language that it is intended to be used. So wow, 
I'm not so sure. Like I know a lot of core DAFs, but I I don't know whether I'm doing the way that you know Python is intended to be used that way. So it's quite a challenging, um, you know, a question to ask yourself. I think it's more like it's like an artistic thing. It's a style. It's not absolutely right or wrong. And there's always people debating what is Pythonic and and how uh, to be Pythonic. For example, when I first uh, started using Python, I was using it in data science projects. So um, I use Pandas. And sometimes I was struggling. It's like, why when I, you know, look up to uh, Stack Overflow, like how to do this? And people give me a way that is, you know, is uh, very Pythonic or Pandaric. I don't know how to say it, but it's Pandas way of doing it. And then I would just like, why can't I just do a for use a for loop to do it? I just loop through every row and go through all the data and do it one by one. Why? Why I have to do it in a very so-called elegant way um, to do it? So um, yeah, I I was a bit you know having these questions a lot um, when I started, and I'm sure that uh, for lot of people, if you are like me. You go from a different language. So uh, the example here is Java, but I, I actually I, I was using something like more more C like uh, C plus uh, plus and uh, C sharp and things like that. So this is more familiar to me, right? So you write a for loop, you have an index, you increase it increase it one by one, and then do something, uh, and then you move across you know every single item and do something. Uh, but this is not considered Pythonic. This is more Pythonic, you know, when you write a for loop in Python, then you go through the items one by one. You don't go through the index anymore. It's, it's too difficult. <laughs> um, and even better, you can use, uh, uh, you know, a comprehension, a list comprehension or a dictionary comprehension. You can just write it in one line. That's it. So this is Pythonic. <laughs> this is, uh, I will see as, as um, so some people say it's a sign of Python. It's simple is better and more, you know, explicit is better. But um, there's also some tiny little things that you know people always debate about which one is more Pythonic. Um, so it comes to um, a, a thing that because as, as I said before, I was involved in um, Terminus DB, an open source um, graph database project, and uh, database. So you will have query language. So uh, another question I want to ask everybody, you can go back to the link that uh, I should, I can uh, change it into the second question and then you will see it. Um, it's a question that's whether or not you like SQL. <laughs> I'm sure like, I'm just assuming everybody know what SQL is. Uh, so if you don't know what SQL is, you can do a quick Google and just look at some of the code, see if you like it. Um, so it's very, it's very subjective, like you can like it or you can hate it. So I, I would like to see what you think. And yeah, let's see. Oh, 50-50. Ooh. Is it true? Like, oh, OK, it's changing now. Ooh. It's amazing. I love seeing this like um, voting thing. Uh, I wish you can see it. But if you don't, then uh, I would just read it out. Now there are like 26 of you voting. And uh, 27. So I would give you maybe five more seconds. So I'm counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So there are a few seconds delay. It's fine. So, okay. I'll assume this is uh, the result now, more or less. So there are like 64.7%. So almost um, two thirds of you think that you like SQL. Oh my. God, <laughs> yeah, like usually I ask this question in a room and if my talk is about database and some people will be like, oh, I am more sophisticated, SQL is very basic and they will say no. <laughs> or just like they're playing with their phone and don't raise their hand. So this is amazing to see the poll, um, right. So um, yeah, so everything just started when I joined Terminus DB as a developer at Apple Card. Uh, so, um, what terminus to be? Let me. Uh, I don't want to advertise too much, so I'll just quickly give you an idea what it is. So uh, this is a table, right? So uh, in traditionally, when you have a SQL-based database, you store data in a table, and 
uh, it's not very intuitive what this is. You can see there are some names, um, there are some date of birth. So it could be, uh, uh, you know, a class of students, right? It could be anything or patients. Uh, but you look at the other columns, then, oh, mother and father, oh, maybe it's a family. And then you have to, in your mind, make a map to map those person mother and then with the ID and then to find who is whose mother and who is whose grandmother. And it's, um, it's not easy. You have to use your brain to map it out. Imagine you you were presented this you presented this um, tree diagram that you can just immediately see that is a family tree. Uh, there are sorry hello yeah so um, you can see that uh, actually there are um, mother and father, and then there are, you know, um, who is whose uh, grandparents. You can immediately see it, so it's very intuitive. Um, so yeah, that's why uh, TerminusDB is a graph database, because everything in the graph is very intuitive, is how a lot of things in our world is a graph things are related to each other is not in a table format. A table format is for other things. Um, but a lot of things are not supposed to be in table format. Um, so here comes, if you use SQL, you end up, for example, you find somebody's uh, John's grandmother. You have to make a join. Uh, they find John's mother and then find John's mother's mother. Or even you, if you want to find both grandmother, you have to find joins father and then joins father's mother. Oh my God, this is complicated. It's difficult to say as well. And um, so for those who like SQL, I assume you like making a lot of joins and it's like solving a puzzle, right? A thousand lines just to do something very simple. And this is the time when I feel like, why can't you just write a program and do a for loop to search it? Um, so I, I personally, I, I have been using SQL for quite a lot. I was a data scientist. And um, uh, there, there comes a point like I feel like I am making a Goldilocks machine. Like it's something very trivial, but I have to make millions of joints to do it. Why? Um, so in Terminus DB, you can write um, more direct queries. So this is uh, Waco JS. So this is not Python. This is uh, in JavaScript uh, that you can just use triple because triple uh, defines the relations between two things in the in the database in the graph, and um, you can uh, have variables in this query. So things with the v is a variable. So it's more programmatic. It's like you declare some variables and find the relations between them, and then give me the variables or solve these puzzles for me. You don't have to solve it yourself like using SQL. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, um, uh, when I join, um, uh, I actually, uh, they, of course, like my colleagues, uh, they know how to write Python, but none of them are like a fully, you know, a Pythonic person. They, they won't consider Python their main programming language. Um, so when I join in, they have this um, JavaScript, uh, Waco JS, that uh, is a query language that uh, you can write in JavaScript. I was thinking, hmm, I have an idea. <laughs> uh, how about we have a Python version of that? We call it Waco Py. So it's a query language for Pythonistas and data scientists, because data scientists, I was a data scientist, I was a Pythonist, and I would love to have it. I would love to be able to write a Python program and directly control my query rather than writing a string. Because you can write it in the format of string, Python gives you the power to do that. But what if I don't have to worry about that? And sometimes passing the string is tricky because uh, you have to escape something or, you know, when if you are on the other side, if you're not the user, you're the um, designer of the database, you have to worry about injection and all these things. So, this is not the best way of um, of writing a query, and I will show you our design, why we are better, and why we can use Python, and it's, it's, it's exciting to do that. So when I join the company and I tell everybody, I say, like, let's do this, and then I am glad that they all love it. Like I, I love my colleagues; they are super supportive. So yay, we have uh, Waco Pi. So let's do it. Um. So yeah, uh, what is Waco Pi? It sounds to me. <laughs> so I gotta tell you what it is. 
So obviously it's a query language, but it lets you to write everything in Python. So you can see that here in this grip uh, is actually in Python, obviously, but we are constructing a query language. So you can see that um, we would have a client. So you can see we have um, in the line, I don't know if you can see my cursor. So there is uh, here, there's a Waco client. So this is what you use is like any API that you can talk to your database. And also, um, uh, this is just using the API to connect. Uh, you can create a database, but this is the query here. So you are creating a schema, so it's a structure of data. So um, you can just chain it like this. So this is all like Python methods. So instead of passing a string to pass it in to your API client, you just build, build like a Python object. And then at the end, you just execute, and it would be like, oh. Yeah, and then it will tell the client to send your query to uh, the database. And that's it. It's like super Python friendly, in my opinion, <laughs> at least. So, but under the hood, actually what the client is passing to the database is the JSON LD file. So instead of pa passing a, a string, like I said, it's difficult because for the user, sometimes you have to escape to avoid some you know, um, tricky bugs. And for the designers, they worry that somebody may do an injection attack. So passing passing a JSON LD is a safer way. But of course, nobody wants to write this. So that's why we have Waco Pi. So if you ask me to write this, I would go mad. Um, our CTO can do this. Uh, he is he did, he uh, just, he's uh, designing the uh, database, so he have to deal with this uh, on the back end side. I, I can't deal with this. This is a nightmare. <laughs> you see, like I would love the Python script. I love things like this. And then if I can write my query like this, I'm happy. If I have to write like this, I would be mad. I would be pulling on my hair out like in one night. So, um, yes. Uh, but I, when I was writing it, I have a question in mind that um, because. Originally, Waco JS was uh, developed by um, by my colleagues who uh, who was using JavaScript. So they think that uh, the first way chaining for them is uh, the best way of doing it in JavaScript. So when I translate it into Python, I kind of more or less keep the same design for now. But I also think that from my from my experience uh, being a data scientist using Python in Pandas, we have multi parameters like Doc types because when we build a data frame, we just pass in all the parameters that I want um, in the like uh, in the in just like uh, the function or method, and then it would just do the job. So I would like to see what do you prefer. So this is another poll. I would like to see whether it's like a chaining that you prefer or multi-parameter that you prefer. This is a genuine question that I really want to know. It will affect how we design the things later. So let me start the poll and you can start now whoa i'm seeing the vote so um yeah actually i i was wondering whether the or is uh is is the first one or the second one hmm. i have to maybe i have to double check it at the end because uh, it's the color is different from what i see before so yeah Okay, I wish I wish this one show me. I think I have to end it before I can see the answer. But one of you votes uh, 81, 70. Okay, so it's kind of like 80 to, to 20 uh, difference. But I think I have to end it to see the result. Okay, uh, I will give like, you a countdown and I'll end it so I can see the result. So um, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I will stop it so I will see the result. Right. Let me see. So this is, I think this is the link to the result and see if I can see it or not. I'm using this, this is new thing for me. So bear with me. Uh, ooh, this is super strange. Okay, uh, I think I have to check it at the end. It, it will become a mystery for, <laughs> for eternity. But uh, maybe I'll write a blog post about it at the end, like uh, and share it with you or something. Like that. But I, I would have to go back to this uh, app and check. So yeah, 
I'm not so sure anymore because this app is strange. Um, but anyway, thank you for voting. I would definitely look at your result at the end. Um, so uh, right now we do have this uh, work of Pi available. It's in our Python client, uh, which you can pip install. store. Um, yeah, of course, it's a Python library, right? So you can pip in store. Um, so you just pip in store, terminus, client, Python is in a job, so it's very easy, but there's a catch. If you do the first one, uh, it only install the, the bare minimal. So you can do the things that I showed you before. You can build your query. You can um, you can talk to the database with the client. But uh, if we have added something new, we have added like the um, output to the data frame. So if you are that is um, using um, you know pandas like me, you may want to get your data back in a data frame. So uh, if you do that, you have to install data frame, which also install um, the dependence uh, dependency for you. So yeah, and uh, after that, you can use this uh, query to df uh, method, uh, and you would get a. So what you do is like you build your query, and then you use the clients to pass it to the database. The database will give you back a JSON file. Is the result that you get. And then if you pass it into this um, query to DF, then you would have a pandas data frame back. It's very neat. And then you can carry on your um, data analysis or you can carry on your machine learning. It's very neat. Uh, I should write a blog post about this and use it you know, to show people. But uh, it's kind of hidden there at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to launch it properly. So. Um, but there are also some design challenges um, because, for example, the JavaScript, we have very simple, barcode.n. But can you see the problem in the second one? Like, if I want to make the same one with Python, so barcode query.n, you can't do that. Because n is a keyword, you dummy. You can't do it like this. It will complain. Your Python interpreter will shout at you and say, like, don't do this. So. Um, yeah, OK, uh, I would add the prefix or add the waco and but you can see it's not as elegant as the JavaScript version. It's more tedious. It, not just the end, it also happened with or, not, as, and from. So I know a lot about Python now. I know that like uh, you can use a lot of you know thing like you know you can even like length, you can reuse it. It just overwrite the default function. But for these keywords, you can't write a function with the name of it. So, mm -mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, looking at the future, so uh, so it's like a baby. This this is like my baby. I only started months ago, so it's still very young. Um, we are still developing it. We hope to make it better. We will have more functionality with the database as well. So the Python clients will need to be better as well. So. Yeah. So also one thing about the database, we have a console that you can use on your web browser. So this is the where you can query um, your database and then have a look at what's the data inside. So this is a tablet format. So it's kind of very similar to when you use um, uh, like uh, Oracle, like, uh, you know, you put a SQL uh, query there. Like uh, I think there's a thing called SQL Workbench that I used before. So put SQL there and then hook up with the driver to your SQL database, and you will get the data back. This is very similar, but also, but it's uh, using Terminus DB. One thing that is better than that is like we also have a graphical um, result. So you can choose to output your uh, result as the graph. So you can have a graph visualization because we're a graph database. So this is more natural to see things in graph. Um, but can we have this in Jupyter Notebook, Fatty, please? Like, I really, I am a fan of Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I use it a lot when I was doing data science project. It's convenient because in data science project, you do a lot of data wangling. You want to see how the data look like. If we have it, have this in Jupyter Notebook, we can totally do things in Python and do it like just, we would just have this uh, terminus DB running at the back. And we can do everything in Jupyter Notebook in Python. That will be amazing. And I think a lot of data scientists will love it as well. And uh, now we can um, 
outputs the data, the result in Pandas data frame. But also one thing good to have is to just directly pass uh, a Pandas data frame back to the database. Uh, it's more complicated because uh, in order to load in the data correctly in the database, you have to have certain structure because you have to construct the graph. So um, this can't be easily automated. Uh, we need to put more um, effort in guessing what the user want uh, in order to do that or give more option for the user to define what they want. So um, it's taking a long, longer time for this the other way around. Um, also, we need more fail proof um, thing. Because now you can, for example, label, you can just put in anything. If it doesn't work, then the, um, if you miss the strange, right? I think you can put emoji in the labels or something. But if you put something that is really wrong, um, that you know you won't break it in the front end side, you won't break it on the Python side, but you may break it in the database side. So we want to check it in the front end. That's um, more efficient. So we have to make more fail proof check. Also check whether you're using the right version of the database and the client, whether they match. If not, then maybe we have to also provide a um, fallback compatibility. Um, you know, um, for to take care of it. So yeah, there are more more work to do. And if you want to know more, we'll have a webinar um, next week. It's at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, British summer time, or uh, if you're in Ireland, uh, it's also 11 a.m. But uh, because uh, we would, the, the clock will change, it's, uh, I, I don't like the summer time thing. So uh, actually, if you're in any other time zone, you have to check uh, what time is it. And if you're in Europe, uh, in Amsterdam, then it's uh, new for you so you can have lunch and have a look at the webinar and um yeah if you have any you know a suggestion if you want to contribute that's great uh, just join our community uh, you will find the right things there and i really want to hear from you so please let me know if you have any more questions or have any suggestions um find me um, my twitter mailbox is always open so yeah thank you so much i will stop sharing and let's hope it works. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for an amazing presentation. Uh, I actually have uh, one or two questions. Uh, do you know Cypher? Uh, Cypher, yes, uh, for Neo4j. Yes. Uh, um, uh, I, yeah. I actually learned today that uh, there is a, another database which supports it. So uh, I'm assuming it's becoming a, some sort of a community standard and I, I kind of really like it. Uh, is there, are there any plans to implement it even for Terminus? Uh, something like Cypher, I think um, we choose another direction to go. Um, we choose, as I said, Cypher is still, you know, uh, a strain. I have talked with somebody who used a Cypher with Python and how he handled the query is that he just formatted the string, uh, which is in Cypher's syntax. So I think uh, in design, we are going to another approach that we just build the query uh, by using the building blocks, which are the, um, the Python methods. Um, so I think it's more flexible in design and, um, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's just a different approach. I, I I haven't used Cypher that much, so I can't really compare. I think people usually praise it by because it's uh, more intuitive for non-technical people. But I think for Pythonista, they would prefer um, using a Python method that's more native to Python. So. OK, yeah, thanks. Uh, let me check if there are any more questions. Hey, 